Dr. Wong from Hong Kong, could you give an overview of your topic, NAFLD in pregnant women, and why it's important? NAFLD is a very common chronic liver problem in the world also including Asia Pacific region that the prevalence in general adult population is like 25-30% so that's why it would be also prevalent among pregnant lady or lady in their childbearing age um, from literature the prevalence in childbearing age a lady would be around 10% which means that in fact it's very common and it will bring a lot of problem because it's closely associated with other metabolic risk factors and most importantly would be uh, diabetes mellitus so it will increase the risk of gestation, uh, gestational diabetes for like two to four times and that will have negative impact on the pregnancy outcomes as well as the fetal outcome so that's why uh, it's important it's common and it has uh, important uh, prognostic uh, implications so that's why we promote to have um, like high index of suspicions to diagnose this uh, condition early on because with our early intervention uh, the um, uh, pregnancy outcome can be improved you say it's common why is that is that because of the prevalence of obesity on the rise yeah yeah definitely uh, because um, I would say that in Asian Pacific region our lifestyle would be quite westernized nowadays mm -hmm. so be it the diet be it the uh, mm -hmm. like lack of exercise because uh, the, in fact the nafudi is uh, becoming more common in our region and uh, I would say that in like uh, now young adult they do not have much time to exercise so that's why uh, in fact we see more and more young adult having NAVOD. You also mentioned there is health risk mm -hmm. obviously to the mother who yeah. might have the metabolic syndrome right. but what is the health risk to the fetus? Right yeah definitely in fact it is associated with um, um, uh, the fetus will have like large for gestational age which means that their birth weight would be a lot um, much uh, larger than normal baby as well in the future in fact these offspring of a lady with NAVOD they are at risk to develop like diabetes in the future as well and in fact this kind of condition can pass on to the next generation so that's why we would uh, advocate to really uh, during pregnancy or before pregnancy the ladies should like control uh, the metabolic risk factors uh, which uh, can reduce the risk of NAVOD what factors do you look for to raise suspicion of mm. NAFLD in a pregnant woman? Right, okay. I think the first thing would be the, the body weight. Yeah, if the that pregnant lady is obviously overweight, then that would be one key risk factors. And we will also have those uh, uh, screening for common metabolic risk factors like blood pressure, uh, the fasting glucose, their lipid profile. So essentially it's just the uh, five uh, diagnostic criteria for metabolic syndrome that if they fulfill three of them then this lady already have metabolic syndrome which is a strong risk factor for, for uh, diabetes. Yeah. If the mother does test positive for gestational diabetes mm -hmm. will you then automatically test for NAFLD? Uh, I think that would be a, a very good idea. I think the current uh, limitation of a situation is that uh, you need to probably order some other tests to uh, establish the diagnosis of NAVOD. But most of the time uh, for to test gestation diabetes is mostly by obstetrician. So most of the time they probably will just stop there uh, unless the di uh, gestation diabetes is quite bad then they will send the, pay, uh, the, the lady to like endocrinologist or a general internalist and then only only by then, uh, the the medical doctor will consider to maybe order an uh, ultrasound scan or uh, maybe do some non-invasive assessment like what I mentioned in my lecture would be a fatty liver index or some other uh, uh, blood-based uh, indexes that can help us to diagnose NAVOD. Once established, mm -hmm. do you treat the overall metabolism or are you focused strictly on mm -hmm. hepatology? Uh, in fact, I will advocate it's a more general uh, management of metabolic uh, profile metabolic risk factors because NAVOD is just one of the many manifestations of a metabolic syndrome so if you control all those metabolic risk factors well in fact NAFLD will improve so as other metabolic problems so uh, would be essentially during pregnancy would be a dietary control because that may not be a good idea to start new medications on this pregnant lady so uh, as I mentioned in my lecture is usually control the calorie intakes as well as different components of the macronutrients so let's presume that the metabolic syndrome is really out of control mm -hmm. what are the drastic measures to treat this 
problem. Right, and most of the time would be very bad glycemic control, so insulin would be needed uh, in this situation. But um, yeah, insulin will help the hepatology issues as uh, well. Yes, that's that's the point I want to make. Is that insulin may not be a good thing to deliver, but I I would say that still the glycemic control is still the most important thing that we have to control first. Uh, as long as the glycemic control is improved, at least in the short or midterm, uh, the liver condition would not uh, like deteriorate as, as such uh, as rapidly. But I would say in long run, insulin may not be the best drug to control uh, or to improve the uh, NAFOD. So uh, I think after uh, uh, delivery, uh, most of the time we probably will switch from insulin to other oral medications, which will be more helpful to the liver side. So if I understand it correctly, Directly, uh, in the in the big picture metabolic control, mm. it is going to be glucose and mm. and diabetes, which right. is going to take the mm. higher position mm. right, than definitely. FLD. Right, and also control the weight gain because some pregnant lady they they eat too much, so that's why that weight is too excessive. So probably we need to monitor the weight gain very closely. Uh, most of the time, we will advise to not. Uh, to limit the waist gain during pregnancy to within like 15 kilogram or as small 20 kilogram because some pregnancy they may gain like 30 or 40 kilograms during pregnancy that would be too much they also increase the risk of navity so we're talking to a chinese audience mm -hmm. lifestyle changes sometimes are very difficult for the chinese <laughs> definitely yeah how do you convince a pregnant lady to <laughs> control her diet at a time when she's culturally thinking she's supposed to be eating more. Yeah, 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 definitely. I think that's very true. I have been pregnant for twice and I that's what, what I, I thought about during my own pregnancy. But I think if we provide sufficient evidence, data to let them know that uh, excessive waste gain is no good, nobody in uh, pregnant lady is no good to her offsprings, I think they would be more motivated. Uh, I, we will tell them they can still have good nutrient uh, even in the absence of excessive weight gain. So I think it's a very balanced diet as uh, like a calorie intake, a protein, carbohydrate, fats. We can show them the, the components and what should be the ratio then. They can still eat uh, very healthily but with good nutrition to the baby. Yeah. Switching topics here. Mm -hmm. You are one of the few Chinese representatives at this meeting. <laughs> yeah. Most of your mainland Chinese colleagues are in China, yes. unable to come here. Right, right. If you could talk to your fellow hepatologist mm. to give them a word of encouragement, <laughs> what would you say? First of all, I really understand it's a very tough time to all the healthcare professionals who work in mainland China. In fact, in many places, also in Hong Kong, indeed, that you have a lot of commitment to your patients and their families that you stay there to to take care of the patients be it, uh, infected by COVID-19 or not. I think uh, they have the mission to stay and take care of the patients. I think all of the healthcare professionals, in particular doctors, hepatologists, they are all working very hard. We really appreciate their great efforts. And maybe there will be temporarily like travel limitation over the these few months but i hope that through technology like from from the live stream they can still participate they can still learn the new stuff as well as they can also give feedback through different channels and i'm sure that in a few months time uh the situation will be under control and i really look forward to like in the a future meeting hopefully by the end of this year then uh, doctors from different countries can come together again to exchange our knowledge and so on so I would say that uh, we all hang in there and try our best to contribute be even very little bit to the situation we hope that this will be under control very soon and we